What's up guys, my name is Liam and today we're we'll taking a look at the Echo Mod 007 V3. This is an HE keyboard and it is the limited edition Year of the Dragon with an 8K polling rate. I've been really looking forward to getting my hands on this to benchmark it against competition to see how it stacks up. So is this going to be the perfect gaming keyboard for you? Let's check it out. Before we get started today, I did want to let you know this was sent out to me by Echo. However, everything you'll be hearing in this video is going to be my own words and my own opinions. And included inside, it does have this user manual. You do get this coiled USB-C cable. It's got the sticker over here, an additional mount for the switches, which is a really cool touch. And as you can see, this is a gasket mounted keyboard. It does also come with some additional keycaps right here. And I'll go over these in just a second. I'll pull them back out when I do put the keyboard on here, but I didn't have space. So you can look at the different color options that this does give you. It also does have a keycap puller a key puller and it does come with an allen wrench with some additional screws in here to assist you in opening it up here is a look of the board itself i'll go ahead and push these additional keycaps in here as you can see you do get a darker looking space bar and i am very impressed with the amount of effort and attention to detail that they actually did put into this when it comes to the layout of the keyboard as you can see i really do like this layout a lot as i'd mentioned in previous videos i really do appreciate how they did add the control key over here but this is a completely all aluminum keyboard it feels very heavy and solid so very sturdy heavy duty they do have the port for the usb-c up here at the top left hand side where i feel like it should be it does have this brass plate right here i do kind of feel like this is a heavier weight but again all aluminum on the bottom it does have this four corner feet design seem to work really great for me and then they do have six screws down here in the bottom to open up in case you wanted to get inside of this the height over here in the front is sitting at around 21 millimeters so for me personally i've been really enjoying the overall layout of this i don't feel like it's too high in the front i don't feel like there's anything that stood out to me that i wish was different i do like how they put the cable up here in the top left corner the keycaps that are used on this not only do they look great they do feel pretty good as well they do have a smoother feeling over here at the top and this is what the bottom of them looks like and opening this up starting out with the top part of the tray as you can see not only does this look great it is a completely solid piece of aluminum there's like no bend or give to it the knob that's up here in the top right hand corner it is completely smooth all around the edges underneath the plate that does hold these switches in place you do have a pretty thick piece of foam right here that is separating it from the circuit board itself and then when you look at this over on the back it has a very thin piece of foam on the back of the circuit board up here in the corners they are using these rubberized style feet and as you can see there's some hot glue here these did fall off it does kind of have these rubberized stabilizers that sit on the back and here's the bottom part of the tray it does have this cable that actually connects the circuit board you do have this very thin piece of foam sitting down here and then underneath that you do also have a little bit more of a stiffer piece of foam a little bit thicker than that one but the base plate on this is incredibly solid and very heavy duty feeling here's the look of the internals of these cream yellow switches the spring in this is rated at a actuation force of around 50 grams on the initial the bottom out is around 58 grams so they do feel a little bit stiffer when you first initially push down on them. They don't necessarily give you the softest typing experience, but they do have this single rail design, kind of this wider rail style. They do feel really solid and stable when you go left and right, but if you were to go up and down, there is just a little bit of play there. They do feel very responsive when it comes to both the press and the release on them. I am seeing some lube on here as well, so they do come pre-lubed, but all around, I do feel like these are a really solid switch for gaming. Taking a look at the Echo software, there's actually a ton of features in here. Starting out at the very top of this main tab, you do have a remap function if you wanted to come in here and select each individual key and assign it to any type of a multimedia function, mouse function, or just change the general keys to whatever you would like. Next up, this does have the dynamic keystroke setting. This is where it allows you to input multiple commands on a single key press. And the good news about this is if you were to select this, it does allow you to adjust the actuation point for each one. So you can have a command once you hit the point seven, 
a separate command when you get 3.5, like if you want to do run, slide, something like that, and same thing on the release. So really cool they did add all this. Here's a look at the mod tap function and then the toggle key function. Over here is probably the most important tab, especially when you're getting started. This is the custom actuation point. So right here, they already have presets. You can select comfort. You can do sensitive. They also have a game preset on here, just sets everything 2.5 millimeters, or you can come in here and tweak it to do a custom. So if you were to set up these switches, typically these are all turned off. So this is just a basic rapid trigger function. So if you wanted to have the press at one millimeter or 1.1 millimeter, whatever, something like that, and then the release at 0.1, you can just kind of come in and move these around and change these as you wish. Every time you press the key, you'd have to go down one millimeter to activate it, and then you just have to release at 0.1 millimeter to deactivate it. You do have an option between 0.1 millimeter all the way down to four millimeters. And as you can see, it does move in 0.1 millimeter steps. I prefer using the all keys or the rapid trigger. This will disable the up control, but what this will do is it'll give you an initial press. So say if you wanted your very first press to be set to something like 0.1 millimeter, 0.5 millimeter, you can do so. And then after you press the 0.5 millimeter is when these keys will take over. So if you were to come down 0.5 millimeter and you have the release set to 0.1 millimeters. Then once you come up 0.1 millimeter, it will reset the trigger. And then the 0.1 millimeter again, if you were to repress it down. So if you wanted to feather the keystroke and get as much sensitivity as possible, then this is where you have full access to be able to do so. I did find myself personally when I was using this, I typically like to play at 0.1.1 but this board for me was just a little bit too sensitive. So you can kind of play around with these yourself, but I was kind of sticking around 0 0.3, 0 0.2 millimeters. When I was playing with 0.1 millimeter on the release, there were times where I was running around and all of a sudden just randomly, if the key barely moves at all, if it barely like shakes or you slightly move your hand, even though you're still completely pressing down the key for me, it was actually my character would stop running. But once I did everything configured to my liking, this thing really ran great and I didn't run across any issues with it in game. They also do have this roar setting right here. Um, I was playing around with it on the testing. I do feel like this is kind of glitchy, so I wasn't able to get some real genuine test results from it. Um, there's some dead spots in it. And even when I was doing my solenoid test, which we'll go to here shortly, it was kind of just glitching out and half the time the trigger would work, half the time it wouldn't work. I didn't necessarily notice this so much as I was using it, but I am waiting for an update before I'd be able to properly test this out. But this is supposed to give you the fastest response time um, for an individual key as possible. As you can see here, it has a maximum of four. So potentially, if you wanted to select WASD and have them be your most sensitive inputs, then this would be worth taking a look at and messing around with. Here's a function setting tab for the function key. It allows you to come and adjust that. Then you have a macro setting. The light options, you do have these presets that you can select right here. And if you were to use some type of an always on, you can just come over here and select what type of color you want. So pretty straightforward stuff. It also does have this custom tab right here where you can come in and individually select each key if you wanted to make them each a custom color. And then there's my work. If you wanted to save any of your custom presets, you can just simply come back and check that out. They also do have this share tab here. So if you wanted to set up any of your light settings or anything like that, you can come and you can share this with other users out there and people can come in and download your preset. Or as you can see, you can go in and you can download other people's presets that they've already set up. Other than that, you just have a my account and an about section. This is where you can upgrade the latest firmware. And honestly, the software, it's really good. It's a little complex, I do feel like, with these menus having to go around it did take me a little bit to find the custom actuation tab, but I really do feel like they do provide you with just about everything that I was looking for anyways when it comes to setting up this board. So I really do feel like they've done a great job. When it comes to the performance of the mod 007 V3, one thing to note is this does have a 8K polling rate. There's not an option in the software that allows you to change it between a 1K and 8K polling rate. I was looking for that as one of the first things I was trying to check out. I wanted to kind of test them against one another to see how this board performs overall with the difference of just the polling 
running rate alone. But since I don't currently have the option to change that, I did put it up against the booting. Same typical types of things I've been doing in all my other videos. I've been using this solenoid test. Every time before I perform this test, I like to put out a disclaimer. This is not the most accurate way to test latency. There's a bunch of different varying factors that can alter the results of the test and end system latency. And in the case of this keyboard versus the Wooting, the Wooting, I do have the Lecker 60s in there. They do have an initial actuation force of around 40 grams with the bottom out of around 60. These are a little bit heavier and they do feel a little bit more stiffer as you're using them. So, so do keep that in mind, but just playing around with this to try to see any type of real world results. I was really curious to see if this 8K polling rate was gonna make much of a difference and if I did notice it at all beating the wooting on the majority of the time. But with the actual results that I was running these tests on, I ran this test up to 10 times and I kind of felt like the results were pretty obvious at that point. So I didn't feel there's a need for me to keep pushing forward. The wooting did actually win 90% of the time on the key press, but I didn't feel like it was really worlds of difference. There were some times where I was kind of jumping out ahead a few extra milliseconds. And on the release, these kind of went back and forth and they did trade blows. The Akko won three times, the Wooting won four times, and then they pretty much dead even tied each other three times. So in conclusion, the fact that the Wooting does have a little bit of lighter switches on the initial press there kind of did stand out in the overall test results considering the fact that the release of these, they were pretty evenly matched and kind of trading blows. With my time going back and forth, a and B testing this against the Wooting at 60HE. I personally couldn't tell any type of a major real world difference in the overall performance of them. I kind of felt like this fell right in line just with the responsiveness of it. Echo has also mentioned that they are working on some firmware updates to kind of fix and button up some of the features on this. Hopefully they can kind of tighten up the performance on it a little bit. But even if they don't, the way that this stands as it is, I really do feel like this works great. It has been incredible for me to use in game. And honestly, I've been enjoying this so much with just the layout, the overall design of it and the look of it. Even though this was sent out to me, I am finding myself enjoying it enough to where I would have no problem spending my own money on picking this up. I do feel like this is one of the best options out there for a gaming keyboard with the 75% layout that is out there on the market. And I would definitely recommend checking out if it's something that you're interested in looking into. All right guys, so if you have any additional questions or feel like I left anything out, please let me know down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed watching this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.